This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruchem Aboyim. Bruchem Aboyim B'Shem Hashem. Welcome everyone to tonight's Shir Parshas Yisroi. We would like to thank Dr. Zakheim and family for sponsoring the Shurman Sefer Shemay, Sli'ili Nishmas, Reb Shloima Eliezer Ben Harav Yaakov, his Neshama Shabin Aliyah, for the whole Mishpacha, for Simcha Sanachas, Ad Biyaskel Tzedek. Yeah, they sponsored the whole Sefer Shemais, the whole Shemais. Yeah. And also, um, co-sponsoring the upcoming Shirim is, Rev, um, is the Israeli family, Leonish Master Father, Mayor Ben David. And also, tonight's Shir is sponsored by our dear friend from South Florida, who joins us every, uh, for every Dafa Shavua Shir. Bikias and Ion, and also Wednesday night, um, he is sponsoring the shir. His daughter Mazal just became a kala, Mazel Tov to Asher, and the gematria of Mazel and Asher is Uvimov Sim. So they should be zocha to have Simcha Sanachas Ad Bias Gol Tzedek. And also, we wish a hearty Mazel Tov, if it's okay if I announce, to my good friend Rabbi Yaakov uh, David. Um, on the occasion of the birth of a baby boy this week, the Bez Hashem, the Bris should be the Itoi Uvizmano, Yishbizoycha, to be Megadal, his son, Latoira, Lachupa, Lamasim Taivim. Okay, so Parshas Yisrael. We have a very important share tonight. Tonight is a life altering share. Why? Because, because we said so, that's why. Okay, so the, uh, we're going to speak a little bit about Zmiroy San Shabbos. And you may want to know what it has to do with Parshas Yisroi, because Parshas Yisroi talks about Shabbos, you know, that's a good connection, no? It's as good as any. <laughs> now, let's speak about, is uh, singing Zemiros on Shabbos, it is, a, is it a Jewish custom? Is it a minhag? Is it a drabanon? A doiraisa? A chiyav? A good idea? A suggestion? A recommendation? Bito Torah? Kiyoma Torah? What exactly is Zmiroi San Shabbos? So Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes in the Siddur of Rabbi Yaakov Emden that it's the minog of Ashkenazim to sing L'shoirer or L'ranein B'Shabbosos during the meal based on the Sefer Chassidim. So according to Rabbi Yaakov Emden, singing on Shabbos is a custom. Who is it a custom for? Ashkenazim. What about for Sfardim? Apparently it's not a custom. So what is it for Svardim? Well, in the Sefer, Zechroinois Eliyahu, of uh, Rebbe Eliyahu Mani, he writes that Zmirois on Shabbos is Kemad It's just about an obligation. To sing at all the Sudois. In fact, Shabbos is Rashi Tevois, Shira Boy Toimar. Song in it, you should say. In other words, if you, let's say, eat gefilte fish, or you eat soup with matzo balls, and even if you have lachmajib, or however you pronounce it, or you have kibbeh, and you don't sing, it's not Shabbos. Shabbos means shira bay toimar. So you'll say, but what am I going to do now? I'm going to start singing? I haven't sang since the first Shabbos after I got married. My wife is going to think that I'm off the wall. All of a sudden, after... 30 years and you start singing after 50 years. It's okay, she thinks that way anyway. Nothing will change. And you'll just tell her that uh, <coughs> you, you realize you, re- you have better pipes than you thought and uh, you, you start now. But according to Rabbi Yaakov Emden, it's Jewish custom. According to Rabbi Yaakov it's Kemar Achiyav. Comes the Chida, and the Chida and the Pnei David on, say, on Parshas Bereshis quotes one of Rabbeinu Ephraim, who's the, from the Chachmei Ashkenaz, and he talks about the special connection between Shabbos and Zmirois. Darshan's Rabbeinu Ephraim. Vayichu HaShamayim Va'aretz God completed the heaven and the earth. This refers to the body. V'chol Tziva'am refers to the bones and the sinews. Vayichal Eloikim HaYoyim HaShvi and God completed on the seventh day. What is the finishing touch of man? The finishing touch of man, Daniel Goldman, is... The mouth, the mouth. Why the mouth? Because uh, when somebody is um, in a, a embryo, they can't talk, you know. And uh, the the baby is born, 
and all of a sudden his mouth opens, and that's the finishing touch of man. And therefore, the Sefer Yitzira says, we have seven gateways, two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and the final one, the seventh, is the mouth. The pe is the shvi. God completed the mouth. God blessed the mouth and designated the mouth that the mouth is selected to learn Torah and to sing and be Mishabeach Hashem. In fact, the word Hashvi is Gematria 397. The same Gematria as Shevach Bapeh. Hashvi is Gematria Shevach Bapeh. In other words, the same way we said Shabbos is Rosh Tevois, Shira Boy Toimar, so too, so too, Hashvi is Gematria Shevach Bapeh. Therefore, the mouth is comparable to Shabbos. The mouth is the seventh, Shabbos is the seventh. Therefore, you need to sing Zmirois on Shabbos and to sanctify your mouth and to learn Torah and to use your mouth for Dvarim Kedoshim and not for Divrei Choyal. So we see that there's a special relationship between Shabbat, Shabbos, Shabbos, however you want to pronounce it, and the mouth, and singing Shira. The word Shabbos is Neutrikoin, Shira Boy Toimar. Hashavi is Gematria Shabbach Bapeh. The seventh gateway, the mouth is de- designated for Shabbos. However, many may not realize why do we sing songs on Shabbos. If you look in the Mishnah Bura, you would not necessarily gain the full uh, appreciation for what one can accomplish by singing on Shabbos. All the Mishnah Bura brings in Simon Reish Peites is after you ate what you want, some you sing Zmirois. But why? And what we're going to learn tonight is that singing Zmiras on Shabbos is a fulfillment of Adai Raisa, Divrei Nevi'im, what may be the best insurance policy for your family, for Klal Yisrael, and uh, even more than that. Number one, the Pasuk says, Vayivar Chalakim Es Yom So today's shir is singing Zmiras on Shabbos, ten ways it will mamish change your life. I don't really like that expression, but uh, if you can't beat them, join them, you know? Ten ways it will mamish change your life. So the Pasuk says in Bereshis, Parag Beis, Pasuk Gimel, Vayivarach Eloikim Es Yom Hashvi. God blessed the seventh day. What did He do? Rav Hashem was sitting there, and the seventh day came in, and Rav Hashem said, Yivarechecha Hashem B'Yishmarecha. How did God bless the seventh day? So the Sefer Chasidim, which according to Rabbi Yaakov Emden, is the source of Zmiros on Shabbos, Rabbi Yaakov, uh, the Sefer Chasidim by Rabbi Yudah Chassid, says that Rabbeinu Meshulam, this refers to Rabbeinu Meshulam ben Kleinimus. Rabbeinu Meshulam ben Kleinimus, one of the Chachmei Ashkenaz, was asked that how you let a light Shabbos candles, but the Torah says, Loi sevaru eish you can't burn a fire, in all of your dwelling places. So says Rev Meshulam ben Kleinimus, quoted in the Sefer Hasidim in at least three places, that the Pasuk says, God bless the seventh day. How did God bless the seventh day? What is the definition of blessing? Well, there's only one way to find out. If you know what a curse is, then the opposite is blessing. So how do we know what curse is? You go to a Sefer called Job. You know what Job is? Eoiv. Wow, that's real. Good going. As um, we go to the Sefer Job, not to be confused with your job, and Eob cursed his day. And how did he curse his day? He said there should be no light. Ah. He said it should be dark. Says Rabbi Shom ben Kleinimus, and we have to light candles before Shabbos. Because if Hashem said the seventh day is blessed, and curse means darkness, so it can't be blessed if it's dark. So we have, we light the Shabbos candles in order to fulfill the, the da'iraisa of Ayyavarech Elohim, as Yom Ashvi. <coughs> you know what else uh, Job said? Job said he, there should be no song in his house. His house should be songless. 
Well, that means a curse is when there's no song, which means when there's blessing, it's full of song. Says the Sefer Hasidim, the reason we sing Zmirois on Shabbos is to fulfill the Da'iraisa of Vayivarech Eloikim Es Yoim Hashvi. It's a blessed day. You can't have blessing without song. Sefer Hasidim repeats this. He writes this in Ois Tav Tav Shin Mem Zayin, as taught by Rabbeinu Meshulam. And he brings this in Ois Resh Ayin Aleph, that that's why we light candles, and that's why we sing Shira. And in Sefer Hasidim, Simon Tav Tes, he writes, you don't put two people into Cherem on Shabbos. Only one. Why? Excuse me, you don't put two people into Cherem in one day. Because the Pasuk says, Loi Oisif Oid Lekalel. And it says, Loi Oisif Oid Lahakois. <laughs> Furthermore, says the Sefer Hasidim, we do not put someone in Cherem at night. So don't breathe easy. Nobody will be put in Cherem this evening. We don't put anyone in Cherem on the Sabbath. Why? Because since Eov cursed the day, only the day could be cursed, not the night. And since Eov says the definition of cursed, uh, and since Shabbos is a blessed day, we don't put anyone in Cherem, which is a curse. And that is why we light candles for Shabbos, and that is why we sing Takadosh Baruch Hu on Shabbos, because since Shabbos is a blessed day, and cursed means songless, in order for Shabbos to be blessed, you have to sing Shira. So you say, I don't have a voice. I sound like a, a foghorn. That's for you, that's song. You know, it's all relative. For you, it's a song. So the first reason to sing Zmiros on Shabbos is it's a fulfillment to coin to the Sefer Hasidim of Vayevarech Eloikim Es Yoim Hashvi. Number two. Oh, that's maybe another way. That's, that's, that's another way, right? Because um, you don't have to work on Shabbos. That's a good point. Right. Okay, I hear. Interesting. Good. Next. The, the prophet Isaiah says, if you will restrain your foot on Shabbos, if you will prevent yourself from doing your needs on my holy day, vikarasa la Shabbos oineg, and you will call Shabbos a delight. We have to call Shabbos a delight. Sounds simple enough. Enough. Get home Shabbos. Say, Shabbos! You know what you are? You're a delight. Is that, uh, is that how we fulfill it? Oineg Shabbos. So, when I was approximately 14 days old, I received a gift from a famous historian now, he, I don't think he handed it to me personally, but I have it in my bookshelf now. And he handed me, he gave me a sefer, Shalom Lavoy Shabbos, which is a, a, a Zmirois book that has art and paintings of the various Zmirois. And uh, I grew up with that book. I, I like that book very much. So I figured I'm giving a, a shear on Zmirois. I'm going to look in the Hakdama. And in the Hakdama, and this is why you can never trust Likud Svarim. Because many, many Likud Svarim, they just quote what they found in a different Likud Sefer. Who quotes what he found in an earlier Likud Sefer? And very often nobody did the original research, and it's all one misquote quoted by another, by another, by another. And here's one example, and I'm going to show you another one. And he says, Chazal say that you have to be Ma'anek Shabbos. How? By lighting the Nerois, by setting the table, by having good dishes, and by singing. Now I tell you, maybe I'm wrong, there is no chazal in Kol HaToyrakula that says that by singing on Shabbos, you're Mekayim Oineg Shabbos. Now, it sounds good, and probably most people would just lap it up and take their word for it, but uh, I'm not able to do that, so I actually checked it up, and unless someone out there could uh, uh, find the source in chazal, I do not believe anywhere it says that Oineg Shabbos is fulfilled by singing on Shabbos. However, there are a number of Paiskim and Sifre Chasidus that say things that seem to indicate that in fact singing on Shabbos is a fulfillment of Oineg Shabbos. But I will tell you this is not found in Chazal. So let's start with the Eishel Avram. The Eishel Avram of Vuchach. I was uh, close with the uh, Rosh Hashiva in Queens. He was actually the Rosh Hashiva of Hebrew Academy in Nassau County. 
He was a Talmud of Rabbi Lezer Silver, Rabbi Shlomo Warman, who was a descendant of the Eishel Avram, yeah, and uh, of Buchach, who was his name, Avram Warman. Uh, anyway, he says an interesting thing. He says that on a holy day, let's say on tonight, Wednesday night, anybody want to reveal what they had for supper? Azriel, what do you have? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Azriel Goldman had chicken nuggets. Did you dip it into duck sauce? Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Were you mechaving that you're eating the shame shemayim to come to the shir, or you just ate? Just you just ate. Thank you. You see? That's what I love about Azriel. He, he's honest. That's the most important midah. Excellent. That's, and, and anyway, that answer works better for the shir. So he just ate. Does it give the Almighty any nachas that you ate chicken cutlets dipped into barbecue sauce on a Wednesday night. I'm sure Hashem's happy that you ate, but we don't find that it gives the Lord particular nachas that Azriel Goldman ate chicken nuggets dipped into barbecue sauce. Fine. However, says the Eishel Avram, the Zoyar HaKadr says, Azriel, what do you have Friday night? Chicken and potato kogal. Are you mechaven to eat it l'shem shemayim, or you just eat it? <laughs> just, say, just say, don't, just say you just eat it. He just eats it. <laughs> the Eishel Avram says from the Zayar Kadosh that when a, a holy Jew like Azriel eats on Shabbos, even if he just eats it, it gives the Lord nachas if someone gets oineg on a holy day. You hear that? So Azriel could be eating uh, chicken and potato kogel. Do you dip the chicken into barbecue sauce on Friday night? No. No, okay. I didn't think so. I was just checking. <laughs> Duck sauce? Okay. Ah. You hear that, Azriel? You should learn from Rabitz's uh, father-in-law that before... And even when he eats the chicken nuggets on Wednesday night dipped into barbecue, so he could also say, he could say he's eating it with Shem Shemayim. In fact, uh, it's brought that every morning, it's very hard to remember before you do something, okay, I'm doing this L'Shem Shemayim, I'm doing L'Shem Shemayim, I'm doing L'Shem Shemayim. But it's brought that you should say in the morning, whatever I do today is L'Shem Shemayim. This way, whatever you do, it's L'Shem Shemayim. Okay. Um, be it as it may, the Zohar HaKadosh teaches that when a Jew enjoys himself on Shabbos, even if he's not mechavin L'Shem Shemayim, it gives the Lord nachas ruach, that a Jew gets oineg on Shabbos. Likewise, when most people when they sing, see I always thought, you go to a shul. We even said this in our tefillah here on Shabbos, you go to a shul. And they're singing, And everyone's all into it. And after davening, you say, oh, it was such an inspiring davening. You say, what, what were you thinking about? Me? I was thinking about uh, Kalbach on the Upper West Side. What do you mean what I was thinking about? You say, but what's that got to do with Prayer, I don't, that's what I was thinking about. So are, did you accomplish anything? If you were thinking about the composer of the song, and you weren't thinking about the meaning of the words, Pashtas, you didn't do anything. Says Eishel Avram, if a Jew sings on a holy day, and it gives him enjoyment, it gives the Lord enjoyment that a Jew enjoys himself on a holy day. So you sort of see that singing on Shabbos is a form of Einik Shabbos. In fact... This is the second time ever. What? You know what? Even a niggin, you should be mixayim. A niggin, yeah. Nigin. Yeah. In fact, the Imre Chaim of Vizhnitz brings from the Avas Yisrael of Vizhnitz that it says, V'haya ki savoy el ha'aretz. Now we know in Gematria, a final letter, like a final tzadi, could have a numerical value 900. You know that? Right, a final chaf is 500, and a final mem is 600, and a final nun is 700, and a final pay is 800, and a final tzadi is 900. 900. So ha'aretz is gematria 1106. It has the same gematria as Shabbos Kodesh. Ve'haya, ein ve'haya lalashon simcha. On Shabbos Kodesh, ve'haya, you should be besimcha when? Ki savoy al ha'aretz, when you come to Shabbos Kodesh, says the Vizhnitzer. You should be besimcha, to be ma'anig in the zmirois of Shabbos. So again, there are no chazal that say you fulfill oineg Shabbos by singing zmirois, but 
This is uh, an idea found somewhat in the Eishel Avram. The vision of Sarebah brings this idea. And if you look in the Radak, the Radak says on the Pasuk in Yeshaya, it says, V'karasa l'shabes oineg. And if you do that, says the Radak, enjoy the Shabbos. How do you enjoy the Shabbos? Azriel, what do they serve? Besides the kugel and the chicken, what do they serve in the golden and mishpacha? How do we start off? Gefilte fish? Challah first. You make Kiddush in the Golden House? No, Yeah, yeah, first you make Kiddush. <laughs> then you have uh, Gefilte fish? You have Chrein? Yes. Any dips? Chomos. okay. And then followed by soup. What do you put in the soup? Cabbage. Cabbage. Okay. Carrots, sounds good. And then chicken, potato kogo. Oh, what's the Sometimes th- corned beef. Corned beef. Sounds good. So, um... Not uh, uh, Polish. I'm also, I don't know, know if I know. If I, okay, so... Um, you're, so says the Radak, you have a nice meal, like in the Goldman fa- family. And then, that, that, through that, Vikarosel Shabbos Oineg, through being ma'aneg and enjoying the Shabbos, you'll come to sing Shira Takadosh Baruch Hu, and through singing Shira Takadosh Baruch Hu, Oz Tisana Gal Hashem, you'll have delight in Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So, so to speak, there are three three steps. First, you have a, a Suda, a Polish style, even Hungarian style. It could get you to the Madrega where you're going to sing Shira Takadosh Baruch Hu, and then through the Shira Takadosh Baruch Hu, it will bring you to be Misane Gal Hashem. So all of this seems to indicate that there is an element of Oineg Shabbos in the Zmirois. And I will tell you, any Jikaba Hasidim over here? No, Jikab. The Imre Noyam of Jikab writes an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. That the Parnasa of the week, the physical Bracha of the week, comes through the agent of eating the Shabbos meal. So Rabbi Yitz, what do they serve by you? Friday night, besides... Uh, Something interesting, no? What do they have? White fish. White fish. There we go. So when you eat the white fish, it brings par- parnasa to the whole week. The achila of Shabbos brings parnasa to the whole week, and through the zmirois of Shabbos, through that agent, it's mashpia the ruchnius and the Torah for the week. That's what the Imre Noyam writes. Okay, to sum it up. We have the first idea that when you sing Zmiros on Shabbos, it's a fulfillment of Vayevarech Eloikim Es Yoyim Hashvi. It's a fulfillment of making Shabbos blessed. And there seems to be an idea of singing Zmiros on Shabbos, your Mekayim Oineg Shabbos. Number three. You ready for number three? Comes the Yesh Noichlen. The Yesh Noichlen was written by the father of the Shla Kadosh. And he writes, he quotes the Sefer Hasidim, and in his percep- he the way he understands what the Sefer Hasidim writes, is that by singing on Shabbos, it's covered to Shabbos. It honors the Shabbos, and it honors the meals of the Shabbos by escorting the king into the world through song and, and escorting him out through song. In other words, the Navi says, V'karas Shabbos, O'yinek v'chibadetoi. You should honor the Shabbos. You should honor the Shabbos. How do you honor the Shabbos? By singing on Shabbos, it brings kavod to the Shabbos. Likewise, Yisoyed V'shar Shavoyda writes, one should be careful to honor God, from your money and your voice. And therefore, um, therefore, uh, from your one by singing on Shabbos, you are being mechabed hakadosh baruch hu. Okay, so that's the third fulfillment of singing on Shabbos. Number four is Shabbos a day of simcha? So Shlomi has the courage. He figures it's better to answer like a halacha question than for me to start snooping around what they serve in his house. So what? It's definitely a Yom Menucha. You take a nap on Shabbos? Azrael takes a nap <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> in the summertime. What about the winter time? It's too short. Okay. 
So, <laughs> I would highly recommend you take, have a practice of year-round naps. It's part Shena B'Shabbos Tainog. That Shabbos is a, is a, anyway, is Shabbos a Yom Simcha. So Shloimi says correctly, halachically there's no Chiyav Simcha on Shabbos. There's a famous Tshuva Nechsam Seifer. If someone has a bad dream, uh, does one fast, uh, could one fast on Shabbos to abolish the portent of a bad dream? You're allowed to. Are you allowed to fast on Yom Tif to abolish the portent of a bad dream? No. Because uh, Yom Tif is a day of Simcha. Ain Simcha Ela Bebasar. You can't have Simcha with tuna fish. You can't have Simcha with herring. You can't have Simcha even with chicken nuggets dipped into barbecue sauce. The only way to have Simcha is meat. And Yom Tif, you got to eat meat. So you can't fast. Shabbos, you're allowed to fast. Because Shabbos is no mitzvah of simcha on Shabbos. There's only mitzvah of oineg. Oineg says delight. You don't have to have happiness, you have to be delightful. However, even though in halachic sense, there's no mitzvah of simcha on Shabbos, in a... There is a dimension of simcha on Shabbos. Comes the Yushalmi, and the Yushalmi says, is one noyheg avelos on Shabbos? Does one mourn on Shabbos? No, because since it says the blessing of God makes you wealthy and you won't have any sadness with it, berchas Hashem hitasher, v'lo Yosef atzav ima, and Shabbos is a day of bracha, shenemar, v'yavarcha lekim as yom ha'shavi, therefore on Shabbos there could be no sadness. But sinna, but not open. Therefore, Toysus and Moed Katan says on Chav Gimel Amad Beis, based on the Yushalmi, there's no Avelos on Shabbos, because Shabbos is a day of blessing, and blessing has no sadness. Isn't there a chiv of three meals on Shabbos? Yes, but there's no chiv of simcha. But there's a chiv of eating on Shabbos. Yeah, but if you have a bad dream, you'll have to, you'll have to forego that. Now, the Tartamima asks on the Yushalmi, why does the Yushalmi need to say that the reason you're not to mourn on Shabbos is because it's a day of blessing and blessing has no sadness. The Yushalmi should say that you're not to mourn on Shabbos because the Yushalmi's opinion is Shabbos is a day of Simcha. Where does the Yushalmi say that Shabbos is a day of Simcha? By the way, if you're still hanging with us, we have a, a group of learning a blot a day until... until um, Purim, to finish Masech the Megillah. We have a hundred people learning Masech the Megillah for uh, Purim. If you want, you could join now. You could join the WhatsApp group. But the Yushalmi writes, if Purim comes out on Shabbos, you're not allowed to make Sudas Purim on Shabbos. Says the Yushalmi, why can't you make Sudas Purim on Shabbos? Because Purim Simcha is a Simcha you have to make, and Shabbos is a Simcha made by God. So you see the Yushalmi holds, Shabbos is a day of Simcha. So why does the Yushalmi have to say you're not to mourn on Shabbos because it's a day of blessing? The Yushalmi should say you're not to mourn on Shabbos because it's a day of Simcha straight up. So the Tartamima says that the source that Shabbos is a day of Simcha is from the Pasuk and Mishle that Shabbos is a blessed day and it can't have any sadness in it. By the way, Says the Tartamima, I don't understand those Paiskim who say Shabbos has no mitzvah of Simcha. If you look in the Sifri on Bahaloischa, on the Pasuk Uviyoim Simchaschem, Uvamayadechem, Viyoim Simchaschem, the Sifri says, refers to Shabbos. Furthermore, on Yom Tif, do you say Be'ahava? Elokeinu Velokeinu 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 do you say Biahava on Yom Tif? No. On Shabbos, do you say Biahava? Why is the Sabbath with love and Yom Tif not? You know why? Because when, when we stood on Sinai, God said, you want to keep Shavuos? We said, no. God said, okay, then I'll drop the mountain on your head. So we said, oh, okay, we'll keep Shavuos. So Shavuos was not given with love. Sukkot was not given with love. God rammed it down our throats. So it's Besimcha, Besos, and it's not with love. Shabbos was given at Mora. We accepted it before God shoved it down our throats. So Shabbos is Biahava. So if it's with love, says the Tartamima, then L'chaira, it would seem it should be a day of Simcha. Fine. So we established that even though Shlomi is right, that halachically it's not a day of Simcha, there's a dimension of Simcha on Shabbos. How is the dimension of Simcha on Shabbos manifest? What do you do on Shabbos? To indicate it's a day of Simcha. Says the Zayar HaKadosh. In 
says the Zayar HaKadosh. Shabbos is a day of Chedva. Look at number 17. Yoyme de Shabbos Chedva Ihu Lakala. And therefore, we come to the Bey Kanishta. You know what the Bey Kanishta is? The Shul. And we wear our nice clothing. With is a day of joy. And with that spirit that stands over us, we sing Shira to Hashem. You know how you indicate, you know how you fulfill Shabbos as a day of Shira? By singing Zmirois on Shabbos. Shabbos Zmirois is a fulfillment of the Simcha element of Shabbos. In fact, comes the Roy Keach, and the Roy Keach says on the Pasuk, Ki b'simcha seitzeyu, u v'shalayim tu v'lun. Heharim v'agvois, yiftzichu l'fneichem rina, they were burst, burst forth before you in song. This refers to singing to greet the Shabbos b'simcha. Yiftzichu ki b'simcha tseitzeyu. On, you go out in simcha, you need to be misameach toward the Shabbos. So here we see, here we have it, the way we'll fulfill Simcha and Shabbos is by singing Zmirais. So even if you never sang Zmirais before, that's fine. It doesn't matter what you did before. We're starting this week, Parshas Yisroi, 5781. Your kids are going to look at you, that you fell off the moon. People are going to think you're, something uh, went wrong. No problem. You, you, you changed your whole Shabbos uh, table. It's not, no more, is it just chicken and potato kugel and soup with cabbage and so with sometimes with carrots in it, but it's also full of zmirais. And that is the fulfillment of simcha. You ready for this one? This is my favorite one. It's a toysus in Sanhedrin Lam and Zayinam and Beis. Toysus brings, then the Chuvas Hagoinim it says, in Eretz Yisrael they don't say Kedusha Sunday through Friday. Only on Shabbos. Why? Because the, who sings to God? The angels. How many wings do angels have? Sheish kenafayim. Why? They sing shira with their wings. One for a Sunday, one for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday, one for Thursday, and one for Friday. Comes Sabbath. And God says, new angels, sing. The angels say, we don't have any wings to sing. So God says, no problem. I have one more kenaf. One more wing. That is the Jewish people. Shenemar mikenaf haaretz zemirois shamanu. You know, so it seems like there's a special Indian of saying Kedusha on Shabbos because the angels don't praise God on Shabbos. Comes the Orzarua, Rabbi Yitzchak Mivina. And he says that on Shabbos there are a lot of new songs that we sing. Hashamayim mesaprim kvoid kel. Ledovid b'shanoi soi es. Hamoy, Hashem Melech Geos Lavesh, Mizmar Shir Liem Hashabbos. What else do we sing? In the Hishmas Kol Chai. And what else? Ove Makalois, River Voice, Amecha. What else? Keela Hadayena. And what else? Hakol Yoducha, right? Hakol Yoducha. Um, says the Orzarua, in his opinion, the reason why we sing extras Mirois on Shabbos is we got to pick up the slack of the heavenly angels. The angels are off. So Eitan, you got to pick up the slack for the angels. You're the seventh wing. Even though maybe it's under your coat, maybe it's hidden, you're a wing. That wing starts flapping on Shabbos. On Shabbos is for Zmirois. Why? You pick up the slack for the heavenly angels. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps that would be a good pshat in why it's longer. Number six. Mizmayer, Shir, Liyayim HaShabbos. A song, a psalm, a song for the Shabbos day. Toiv l'hoidetz Hashem. We say that on Sabbath it's good to sing to God. Which implies that on Tuesday, Lavdavka is good to sing to God. Or at least it's better to sing to God on Saturday. Why is it better to sing to God on Saturday? Says Radak. You know why it's better to sing to God on Saturday? Because on the rest of the week, a person's busy. What are they busy with? They're busy plowing, winnowing, 
threshing, weaving. What else? People have these things called phones and it keeps them busy day and night. People make the mistake, they sleep next to the phone. So the whole night they're waking up, waking up, they're waking up. So then they're tired the next day. So since they're tired the next day, they're on their phone the whole, the, the, during the day. So they don't sleep during the day and then they can't sleep the whole night. And the blue light in the phone, Stam doesn't let you sleep the whole night. If you want to know why can't you sleep, because you're looking at your phone most of the day. And the phone gives off blue light. And if you look at too much blue light, you cannot sleep the whole night. So you might want to just eat a toiva, get an app that diminishes the blue light on your computer or on your phone. This way you could actually sleep at night, so you could actually dive in the next day and learn. But if you want to continue being an absolute wreck for the rest of your life, then continue doing whatever you've been doing until now. That is uh, an unsolicited advice. Okay, anyway, people are busy during the week. They're stressed out, they have anxiety, they're busy, and they don't have the physical wherewithal, the emotional wherewithal, the psychological wherewithal to sing to Hashem. Say, sing! I want to, I'd rather growl. I'd rather be miserable. The only day that a person has the emotional wherewithal to sing to HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Shabbos. And therefore, since you have that opportunity, the soul is somewhat unshackled by the tethers of uh, earthly occupation. You need to take advantage of that to allow the soul to soar and to sing Shira to Hashem. Now I'm going to give you an example of the danger of relying on Likud Svarim. Likud Svarim are unbelievable. They save people millions of hours. However, you also have to be careful because very often Likud Svarim have been around now for a very long time and if one person in the Likud Sefer business misquoted, then you can be sure that Taos Lo'olam Chayzeres, it will be cited and cited and cited. And I'll give you an example. About two years ago, I was in Israel, and I was in my friend's house, and I saw something in a Zemiroy's book from the Shiboy Lei Haleket, and basically the Shiboy, and I, and I fell for it. I shouldn't have fallen for it. Shiboy Haleket is one of the Rishonim. And we have over here, number 24, that the Shiboy Lei Haleket says that on Shabbos, the songs of Shabbos carry a person off to a faraway world, and a person is sensitive to the power of Nigun more than any other day. I'll buy that, it sounds right. But the Shibbal Eleka doesn't say it. So the first thing I wanted to do is, I wanted to put it on the Mar Mekoyma sheet, so I checked the Shibbal Eleka, I didn't have the Sefer I saw in Israel. It ain't in the Shibbal Eleka. I did a search, I went through the relevant paragraphs, it ain't there. So I called, Gedalia, are you there? Gedalia Schwartz last night at 12 o'clock, he's going to get it from me that night. And I called my friend in Israel where I saw it, and he was going to scan it to me, and he scanned it to me, and I, he quoted the Sefer, quotes the Shibbat Eleket. I look in the Shibbat Eleket, it's not there. I did a search on those words, it's in all the Likud Svarim on Zmirois, they got it from this first Likud Sefer, and the Shibbat Eleket never said it, and nobody ever said it. It was sort of made up by a Likud Sefer that if you sing Zemir on Shabbos, it carries you to a faraway world and your soul is perceptive to Nigun, and it's a very nice idea, but it's not in the Shibbat Lei Halakat. Likud Sefer is a Sefer that collects this Rishon says that, this Achron says that, and basically if all the Likud Svarim bring this idea and none of the Shib- editions of Shibbat Lei Halakat have it. Anyway, but the Radak says this concept, and again, the concept is very pashat that during the rest of the week, no one is in the mood of singing. On Shabbos, you have the free spirit, you're unshackled from the tethers of this world, and you have the opportunity to sing. Number seven, let's try to go through. Number seven it comes from the Sefer Charedim. The Sefer Charedim is written by Rebbe Lezer Askiri, who wrote one of the most beautiful all time songs called Yedid Nefesh, Yedid Nefesh. Now, he wrote the words, the tune is uh, probably Yossi Green, <laughs> sang by Avram Fried. But uh, he wrote the words, mm-hmm. Yedid Nefesh of Arachaman. And he wrote a Sefer, Sefer Charedim, he was a contemporary of the Arizal. And he talks about the Madrega of love of God. And he says, the Chavis Havavoy says, that the highest Madrega is love of a Baruch There's nothing higher than that. 
And that is why the mitzvah of Avas Hashem is listed in Sefer Devarim many times, because it's the end goal, it's the highest of all the madrigos. And the Zayar HaKadr says a person needs to attach himself in the love of Hashem because love of God is the highest madrega. Now one aspect of love of God, if you love someone, if you really love someone deeply, passionately, what will you do for them? Serenade. You'll sing them a love song. No, Rabbi Yitz. You serenade them. Shire Yedidos. Shir Hashirim, a love song. Song, says the Sefer Charedim, is an expression of Ahavot HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And therefore, when you sing your Zmirais, Friday night, Shabbos day, realize, recognize it is the fulfillment of the greatest mitzvah, namely, Avas Hashem. Number eight, and I'm sharing you with you now, maybe the top Maramakam we're going to see this year, one of the all-time greatest Maramakam, I, I never saw this before. This is from the Sefer HaChayim of the brother of the Maral of Prague. By the way, you know what? The Chiddush of the Sefer HaChayim, the famous, that the word Gemara is Rashi Tevois, Gavriel, Michael, Raphael, and Uriel. That comes from the Sefer HaChayim of the brother of the Maral of Prague. He says like this, We live, unfortunately, in an era we have no Kohen Gano. We have no Urim Vitumim. We have no prophecy. We have no miracles in the Temple. We all are believers, ma'aminim b'nei ba'aminim, but is there anything concrete that we have and we could say, this is absolute evidence that there is a God and the Torah is true? We don't have any of the spiritual treasures of antiquity. We don't have ma, the man. We don't have any of the miracles of the smoke going straight up. You know, we don't, we don't have anything absolute that we could say that this is ironclad evidence that this is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. says the Sefer HaChayim because we're lacking all of these great gifts the Lord blessed be He gave us the most concrete sign that He's there with us and that the Torah is true and that is even though we don't have the institution of prophecy but every Jew Friday night he feels in himself a shefa eloiki, a divine bounty. And he feels a divine illumination in his soul. And he feels uplifted. And he feels illuminated. And he feels an inner divine happiness and glow. And that is the sanctity of Shabbos. Says the Sefer HaChayim, the sanctity of Shabbos is a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and our clearest absolute evidence that there is a God in Klal Yisrael. This is something only a Jew could perceive and feel and a guy cannot tap into. A Gentile doesn't recognize this. There is no question, says the Sefer HaChayim. Even though we're in Tomei land and we're in America, God has not forsaken us. There is no question that this is a glimmer and a spark and a semblance of prophecy. Don't get caught. We don't have prophets today. Except for me, of course, I could tell you who's going to win the Super Bowl on Sunday. But besides that, now I'm joking by the way, I can't tell you that. But, nor do I really care. But, what? Azriel could tell you though. Azriel is the last remaining uh, prophet. It must be his mother's chicken soup with cabbage and sometimes carrots. But, <laughs> what? Not sometimes. Okay. But, um, says the Sefer HaChayim, there is no element that exists in this world that is clearer evidence of absolute existence of the Almighty than this feeling of sanctity that envelops the Jewish soul on Shabbos. This is nothing short of an element of Nevuah. And therefore he says, it is the nature of the Jewish soul which is a source of happiness as well as it is the nature of the mitzvahs of Hashem which engender happiness, that when these two items, the Jewish soul, encounters the mitzvah of Shabbos, after the soul has been cloaked and clothed and masked in the darkness of the weekday, when the two join together, it produces such a ecstasy that it has to be uh, 
greeted, the Shabbos greeting is with a divine light that nothing compares to that. Now, comes Rabbi Sacher Doiv Teichtal. You know who that is? The author of Eim Habanim Smecha, which is a very interesting sefer, controversial sefer. He was one of the great Paiskim in Europe, who his view toward Eretz Yisrael drastically changed in uh, the wake of the Holocaust, where he uh, called for a Jewish return to the Holy Land after not being uh, an advocate of the Jewish settlement. He wrote a perush on the Zemirois. And he says that based on this, these noble words, these electrifying words of the Sefer HaChayim, Rabbi Sachar Doiv Teichtal, the Shal Setshuvas Mishnas Sachar, Sachar Doiv Teichtal, he wrote, Eim Habanim Smecha. He says, now that we know that the Jew's soul is enveloped and connected with this super, div- supernatural and divine connection Friday night, this gives us a deeper reason of why a Jew should sing Zmiray Sakhalish Baruchu on Friday night. V'chal Hamar Be'alashoyrer Be'lel Shabbos Harezeh Meshubach. The more you sing, the more praiseworthy you are. You know why? He says, we find in the Zmiris of David HaMelech, sometimes the Gemara Psachim says that first David HaMelech had Ruach HaKodesh and then he sang. Sometimes he sang and that engendered Ruach HaKodesh. So too, there are two types of ways to greet the Shabbos. Some Jews are so in touch with their soul that they feel this elevated feeling Friday night and they feel the Devekos and from the Devekos they could come to Shira. Others are still may be clothed in the darkness of the weekday, but by singing Shira, it brings them to the Devekos in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Therefore, says the um, Rabbi Sarchad of Teichtal, in the Shira, Ma Yedidos, you know this one? Ma Yedidos Menuchasech MBD Ad Shabbos HaMalka Right? So we say, yeah. Through the Zmirois of Shabbos, my soul yearns for you. That's one way of using the, Deveik, the Shira of Shabbos to reach Devekos. Other times, it's through Devekos we come to Shira. By the way, the Rosh Chachman, the Shar Ava, Parak Yud, Simulam, and Beis, and Simulam Yadad also mentions that Shira is a feature of Devekos. So, the eighth benefit of singing Shira to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Friday night is it's an expression of our Devekos to Hashem and it brings us to Devekos to Hashem. Number nine. Ready for number nine, Ira? What's your favorite Shabbos song? You want? You're, you're, you're not the singing guy, but... Your heart sings. Your heart pulsates in great melody to the Lord, right? So the Shira, um, it's an interesting thing. That in the Medrash and Shira Shirem Rabbah, by the way, what's the last Pasuk in Shira Shirem? Can I have a Siddur? Berahach doidi udmelecha Thank you. That's Kohelis, pal. Yeah, <laughs> the last passage in Shira Shirim is like this. Berahach doidi udmei lecha litzvi o'eliyoy for ha'yolim al we say, run away, my beloved. Who's our beloved? God. We're saying, run away. What, what a beautiful song. Hey, hey, run away. No, don't go. I'm not finished yet. Israel, stay. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. Okay. So, uh, run away. we say to God, run away. What's this all about? Says the Medrash. There's a, medr- the, there's a story. There's a king who made a suda and he invited guests. Some of them ate, drank, and blessed the king. Some of them ate, drank, and cursed the king. So the Melch was very upset. He wanted to create great commotion 
and punish everyone. So the maiden came in and he said, No, king, instead of looking at those who curse you, look at those who bless and sing to you. So too, when the Jewish people eat and drink, and they're meshabech, and they sing to Hashem, Hashem listens to their voice, and Hashem is appeased by them. When the Gentiles eat, drink, they curse Hashem. How? By speaking about lewd matters. So Hashem says, you know what? These, these low people, they eat and drink, and they speak about promiscuity. I want to destroy the world. Comes the Torah and says to God, God Almighty, instead of looking at these low people, look at the Jewish people. What do the Jewish people, when they eat and drink, they sing Zemirais. Ah, oh, you know what God says when the Jewish people sing Zemirais? Ruach HaKodesh says to God, Berahach doidi, run away from the Gentiles. Vihidavek ba'am Yisrael. You know why God dismisses the Gentiles and say, I don't want to have anything to do with you, and he clings to us? It's because we sing, Kari Bahain Alam, through the Zmirois that we sing, Takadosh Baruch Hu, God separates himself from the Gentiles and he clings to the Jewish people. And I would like to suggest that's why Shir Hashirim, the Song of Songs, ends with, Barach Doidi, God, we're singing to you. So you run away from the Gentiles and cling to us. As we said in our tefillah share on Shabbos, we also give it Friday, by the way, if you want to tune in live on Zoom. Shear is a lashon of what? A necklace. It keeps the animal connected. Why is God connected to the Jewish people? Through our shear. A shear is a, a harness that connects HaKadosh Baruch Hu to Kala Yisrael. By the way, the Gemara Megillah says the same thing. That when the Jewish people were eating and drinking at uh, Achashosh's party, God wanted to destroy us. But the Gemara Megillah makes note of the fact that when Jews eat and drink, they sing Zmiro Yisakadosh Baruch Hu. And the Ben Yoyada writes, and the Ksav Soifer writes, that we were saved in the times of Purim, and the merit of the Shabbos Zmiroys that we sang at the Suda. So it's an amazing thing. The, what causes God to favor the Jewish people, and to run away and, and detach Himself from the Gentiles, is the Zmiroys of Shabbos. And finally, number 10, the 10th benefit of Zmiroys of Shabbos. They asked for Michal Yehuda Lefkowitz. So the story goes like this. There was a kid. He was, he was learning in a top yeshiva. He was mamish, so the best guy in whatever, the best yeshiva. He was saying chaburas on the Ketzeis HaChosh and the Sivus HaMishpat based on the Machloikis of Shimon Shkop and Rabar Ber. Whatever, the details are not important. And then he, he was veering off and he started going to a, a school for wayward kids. And the next thing they knew, he was smoking on Shabbos. And they came to Michal Yehuda Lefkowitz. And they said, Michal Yehuda, what do we do with our kid? And Michal Yehuda said, do you sing Zmiroy on Shabbos? They said, uh, maybe you're not getting the question. We're asking you, the kid is desecrating the Shabbos. What should we do? Michal Yehuda repeated himself, if you sing Zmiroy on Shabbos, you're good. That is an insurance policy. Says Michal Yehuda, in a family where they sing Zmiroy, there is that emotional aspect of Yahados, of Yiddishkeit, that will forever stay with a child, and it is an insurance policy. Says Remicha Yehuda, it is not enough for Abayim and Yeshiva just to teach Shas and Paiskim. They need to sing with the Talmidim. They need to teach the Talmidim the longing, yearning, pining words of the Zmiris of Shabbos, <coughs> written by the Ibn Ezra. Libi, Uvisari, Yeraninu, Lekel Chai. We know. Yom Shabbos Oynehein Lishkoyach Who was that written by? Um, it was written by Rabbi Yehuda Halevi Who Asher Diber Right? Um, it spells out Yehuda It was written by Yehuda Halevi Levi, The author of the Kuzari The Zmirois were written by Great Paitonim The Ibn Ezra wrote a Zemer, spelling out Avram. In fact, in the Yesod Yosef of Rabbi Yosef Yuska, he writes that since this mirror is written by holy Jews, by each piyot, you should think of the name of the Mechaver and be Mechavein that the Zuchus and the merit of that author should stand up for you and that it brings great Nachas to that Mechaver. Says Remichel Yehuda, 
teach the children that the Shabbos Miros is an opportunity to yearn and pine for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. End of the story was, this Bachar made a turnaround, and now he is an Avrech Nifla, and uh, you know how the end of the story is. But, by the way, there is a very well-known story with Rav Shach, and I don't want to say it over exactly publicly. If you want to know the story, I put it on the sheet. You can read it yourself. But uh, in a nice way, Rav Shach regretted the fact that he uh, didn't sing Zmirois the way he felt perhaps uh, was, was uh, that Rav Shach ran back, so to speak, to the Beis HaMedrash. And Rav Shach said openly, and it's printed, that had he devoted himself to the Zmiros of Shabbos, he would have seen more nachas from his children. That's what Rav Shach said, and uh, that's uh, a well-known comment of Rav Shach. The exact details of the story, you could look for yourself. Bottom line is that it's a, a good idea. Not every kid is cut out for Ion in yeshiva, but the Shabbos Miroy stays with the kid for the rest of their life. And it is a very great insurance policy. So, the executive summary of the ten ways singing Zmiros on Shabbos will mamish change your life. Number one, when one sings on Zmiros on Shabbos, they're fulfilling a da'iraisa vayivarech elokim as yom Number two, it is an element of oineg Shabbos, delighting in the Shabbos. Number three, it is an element of simcha, Excuse me, an element of Kavod Shabbos, says the Yesh Noichlem. Number four, singing Zmiras on Shabbos is an expression of Simcha on Shabbos. Number five, since the Malachi Asharis don't have wings on Shabbos, you're picking up the slack for the Malachi Asharis. Number six, the rest of the week, you don't have the wherewithal to sing. Shabbos, you have a more freedom of soul to express yourself in song Ta'kadosh Baruch Hu. Number six, that was number six. Number seven, you love God, you sing the Rebbein Shalom song as an expression of Ava, expression of your love for the Rebbein Shalom. Number eight, since the Sefer Chaim teaches that the greatest demonstration of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence in Am Yisrael is the feeling we have on Shabbos, that, should, that Devekos should be expressed with Zmiras on Shabbos. Number nine, singing Shabbos songs causes God to run away from the nations of the world and cling to the Jewish people. And number 10, singing on Shabbos will maximize the, uh, your children's spiritual career. And uh, it's never too late to start. The Yavon should give us Siyata Deshmaya. Lashir Ulezamer Lefanov Betoiv Uveneimos Arbi Asko El Tzedek Mher Amenu Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.